It's reported that Mickey Mantle used to like to tell a story about his death. When he arrived at the pearly gates, St. Peter shook his head and sent him away. Resigned, Mantle turned to go, only to be summoned back. Before you go, St. Peter said, God wants to know if you'd sign these dozen balls. It's a laughable story, and Mantle would tell it often, but it's a story that gives us insight into his belief about himself. He believed that God could appreciate his talents, but not appreciate his humanness. If you know his story at all, you know that he was always very hard on himself. He didn't feel very worthy of heaven. And of course, there were enough facts about his life that tell us of his human fragility. He stated that he was driven to alcoholism by the fear of an early death. You see, his father and grandfather both died of Hodgkin's disease before the age of 41. He was also very honest about his relationship with his wife and his children. He was wayward. He neglected them. And we all know that he could be crude and surly and downright obscene to his adoring public. Bob Costas, the NBC broadcaster, eulogized him as a fragile hero. And his friend, Roy Firestone, the ESPN interviewer, stated, as long as I've known him, he's always made fun of himself. Mantle was paralyzed by self-doubt. He never really believed that he mattered to anyone. In our second reading this weekend, what does Paul tell us? He says, I was once a blasphemer, a persecutor, arrogant, but I have been mercifully treated. You see, Paul knew that this Jesus Christ came into the world for just such a person as him, for the sinners. And what does Paul say? Of these, I was foremost. He didn't make fun of himself like Mantle did, but he was all too aware of his humanness. But he believed that even in the midst of his humanness, he was worthy of God's love. And what does Luke tell us in the Gospel? He tells us that this Jesus welcomed sinners and he ate with them that Jesus tells, of a God, tells us of a God who would leave the 99 righteous and go after the lost one. Yet there are so many people in our world who are just like Mickey Mantle, paralyzed by self-doubt, never really feeling that we matter. Mantle was broken. He was an extremely vulnerable human being. And the scriptures this week weekend talk to him. He is just the kind of person that Christ was so interested in. And it's unfortunate that so many people like Mantle, so many broken people don't understand that they are the ones that Jesus talks about. The lost, the broken, and the ones that our God and Jesus go after all the time. Elisa Morgan is a nationally recognized speaker. She's written about 15 books. She often contributes to Christianity Today. In one very interesting book, she entitles it, The Beauty of Broken. And she shares her own personal story of brokenness from her original family of or origin to her second family, which is, of course, her, her husband and two grown children. And she tells us that over the years, her family has privately struggled with so many of the same issues that so many families struggle with. Alcoholism, drug addiction, infertility, adoption, teen pregnancy, abortion, and a number of others. And as she tells us these stories, each story layers onto the next to reveal the brokenness that comes into so many of our lives without invitation. 
And what she does in her book is that she destroys the myth of the perfect family. There is no such thing as perfection. We're all broken in our own way. Now, if you are on the internet much, perhaps you are familiar with TED, T-E-D. It's, in t- it's technology entertainment design. It's a set of global conferences owned by the private nonprofit Sapling Foundation under the slogan of ideas worth spreading. It was founded in 84 as a one-time thing and it continues on today and there are some wonderful conferences on it and I've put that on the bulletin for you to look at. There's one such conference by sociologist Brene Brown entitled The Power of Vulnerability. And since August of this year, it has garnered over 10 million hits. And for very good reason. Because what she does in this conference is she tells us that we are hungry for the freedom to admit our vulnerability. She pushes us to embrace our own brokenness with the reality that we are not alone in it, that we are or easily could be just one step away from all the broken people around us. This is sort of what she says. She says, we are those people. The truth is, we are the others. Most of us are one paycheck, one divorce, one drug-addicted kid, one mental health diagnosis, one serious illness, one sexual assault, one drinking binge, one night of unprotected sex, or one affair away from being those people. The ones we don't trust, the ones we pity, the ones we don't let our children play with, the ones that bad things happen to, the ones we don't want living next door. Well, those people are what the scriptures address this weekend. The scriptures are all about our brokenness, our imperfections, and God's overwhelming mercy and compassion. I know many of you know the story of Mickey Mantle, that in 94 he entered the Betty Ford Clinic. It did change his life. reconciled with his family, and then, of course, as human life does to so many of us, he gets liver cancer. He was lost for a time during his life. He was one of those that Jesus would go after and leave the 99, paralyzed by self-doubt, never feeling that he mattered. Yet when he died, there was an extremely touching article written about him In 1995, I happened to be at Cape Cod, and there was in the Cape Cod Times an article written by a woman by the name of Alicia Banyan. And she wrote about Mantle in that we need heroes and and our own ability to forgive. She wrote about how we could forgive Mick of everything. We forgave him when he went for the homer instead of the single. We forgave him when he struck out. We forgave him when he could no longer play center field. And when Jim Booten burst the bottle of the dream world that had been for us Yankee baseball, we forgave Mickey all of his many trespasses. It was not in our hearts, she writes, even later when we were adults and his alcohol abuse was so obviously ravaging his once magnificent body to take him to task for his shortcomings for reasons as incomprehensible as why a kid is drawn to a game that looks as ridiculous on paper as baseball, we could never quite abandon our affection for the Mick. It's politically incorrect and probably irrational, but those of us who spent our childhoods looking up at Mickey Mantle find it pointless or perhaps just too painful to look down on him now. For us, he's not a haggard man, paying the price for a lifetime of poor choices. For us, he's a ball player frozen in time, young, powerful, shy. His image underneath all the gold dust of childhood, untarnished. When I read those words, 
they really summed up what the scriptures are trying to get at this weekend. And Bob Costas told the crowd at Mantle's funeral that even as an adult, he carries Mickey Mantle's baseball card in his wallet. And you know, that's my concept of God. A God who carries around a crumpled picture of us, always ready to forgive us. There is no such thing as perfection. We're all broken in some way. And I think the scriptures tell us this weekend that our God is probably, and Jesus was, very politically incorrect in his forgiveness and probably irrational in his forgiveness. Jesus welcomes sinners and eats with them. Paul said, I was a blasphemer and a persecutor, but I was mercifully treated. And Jesus tells us of a, tells us of a God who goes after the one and leaves the 99 righteous. Politically incorrect, irrational, but that's the kind of mercy that our God has for each one of us.